So one question I consistently get is, should you or should you not do a deload, take some time off from your training if you're doing high intensity training? And it's an excellent question. And I'm sure the answer I'm going to give you may be a little bit contrary to a lot of the information that you're getting out there. But I have a bit of an insight as I started off at 125 pounds at six feet tall, I was able to realize my goal of being a successful natural bodybuilder using a protocol called naturally intense, high intensity training, whereby I would train with blistering intensity Absolutely. with workouts that lasted only 10, 15, max 20 minutes, just three times a week. And I've been training that way for over 30 years and I still look like this at 50 years old. But even though I may have decades of personal experience with high intensity training, what's most important is the fact that I've trained hundreds of men and women over the past three decades of my career and always taken meticulous notes of my own training, my own progress and the progress of my clients. So I have a lot of data to share and have a lot of information and observations of what I saw comparing those people who were training with this particular form of high intensity training when they did the deload compared to people who never took any time off whatsoever. And I'm pretty sure you're going to be intrigued by the results. So stay tuned. Let's talk more about this. So in this video, we're talking about deloading. Should you take a week off or time off when you're training with high intensity? And first, I'm going to start not with my own personal experience, but what I have seen over the years with my clients. And then answer the question whether or not I ever do deloads. Now, bear in mind, with naturally intense, high intensity training, the workouts last only 10 minutes, since three times a week but also very different from other high intensity training protocols. Every single workout is different. And since you're training three days a week, there's usually six to as much as seven days of rest in between workouts and you're cycling the exercises. Since you're never doing the same workouts back to back, for example, if you did a bench press on one particular day, it could be that you may not do a bench press exactly that same way again for months on end which gives a lot of time for recuperation as recuperation is key to muscle growth. Now I train a lot of individuals who do a lot of traveling and those individuals would often train religiously weeks on end and then all of a sudden take a week off and then come right back. And because I've trained a good number of people who follow this particular pattern, it gives us some comprehensive insight as to whether or not that deload makes a difference in terms of your overall muscle mass, muscle strength, and fat loss. And here's what I've observed. And it's extremely interesting. Those individuals who took a week off showed on average, no decrease in their overall muscle strength as their strength levels were more or less the same as those individuals who were training consistently. But there were a few outliers, some individuals who did seem to be slightly stronger whenever they came back after being away for a week, but only if the following parameters were met. They had to be individuals who were training consistently, but also, interestingly enough, were not necessarily always getting enough sleep. Individuals who seemed to have problems getting adequate sleep when they took a week off over extended training with naturally intense high intensity training coming back, they would tend to be slightly stronger than before. Muscle mass increases stayed exactly the same between those who were training consistently and those who were doing a deload by taking a week off here and there. There was also a slight reduction in overall fat loss between those who were taking a week off and those who were training consistently, which kind of makes sense. After an extremely intense, high intensity training session, you are wasted your body is in a very different state from what you would have been before you started training. And in order to get back to that point of homeostasis, where you're breathing normally and not feel like a train hit you the way you do after a really high intensity workout, that requires energy in the form of what we call excess post oxygen consumption, EPOC, or the afterburn effect, whereby your body has to burn more calories in order to get back into equilibrium. And so it makes sense that those individuals who are training consistently would see more fat loss, slightly more fat loss, not tremendously more, but slightly more fat loss than those who would sporadically take a week off. And I can infer this as being statistically significant because the decrease in fat loss compared to those who are training consistently was directly proportional to how much time you took off from training. So individuals who would do a deload for let's say two weeks 
would lose much less fat than those who took a week off. And those who took off for three weeks or more would also lose less fat overall than those who took off two weeks. Now, the two-week deload mark is interesting because I did have clients as well who from time to time would just take two weeks off because of travel, work, or whatever else. And like I said, compared to someone who's training consistently, there was some decrease in fat loss. But at two weeks off, strength levels with this particular form of training were exactly the same, if not, in some cases, slightly higher. But very important, bear in mind that naturally intense, high-intensity training is a form of training where there's almost no rest between sets. So there's a significant cardiovascular effect that comes with training this way. And so in order to train at such blistering intensity, you have to have an extremely high level of fitness. And what happens over the course of two weeks is that somehow or the other, from what I've observed, it becomes more difficult in order for people to really push it. Remember, this form of training isn't something people were doing on their own. It was always done under the supervision of either myself or a certified naturally intense personal trainer, whereby we push our clients through those workouts in order to lift those heavier weights or perform more repetitions than they normally would. And bear in mind, for those who sporadically took a week off or sporadically took two weeks off here and there, what were training more or less consistently, their results long-term were exactly the same as those individuals who were consistent with their training. And that's an important distinction as it really gives you some insight as to what happens when you deload with this particular form of training. Now, the big question is, do I take any time off with my own training? And for that, the answer is no. I have never done a deload over the course of the 33 years I've been training this way. The only time I've ever taken off from my training was if I had an injury. And even then I did my very utmost to get back to the gym as quickly as possible. I think it's important as well to throw in the fact that I was able to build as much muscle mass as I have over the years comes directly as a result of the fact that I'm able to train in a way to stimulate muscle growth in a sustainable way that allows me to do it week after week after week. We've been the benefits of the training every single time and also as a benchmark because I've always seen my strength going up for many years, I never again saw a reason to deload. And bear in mind, I have always trained extremely heavy and continue to train extremely heavy. And at 50 years old, the reason why I'm able to continually train as hard as I do, as heavy as I do, is because I don't have any injuries. And from looking at observations of my clients over the years, I didn't see enough compelling evidence with this particular form of training to do any type of deloading because, as I said earlier, there's so much variety in the workouts and the volume is so low. I train literally an hour a week. An hour a week is nothing compared to the fact that most people will train an hour four to five times a week. That plus the fact that every single workout is different and there's so much time between individual exercises. In a way, I'm always doing a bit of a deload. And because I kept on making progress as the years went by, I never saw a reason to incorporate a deload. But bear in mind, I get exactly the same amount of sleep every single day. And my dad is spot on and has been spot on for a very, very long time. Almost everything about my life is optimized to allow me to be able to train at maximum intensity three times a week. Most people are not that optimized. And if you train with a different protocol, I can definitely see the value of a deload and taking a week off here and there, especially doing high volume training. Because remember, muscles don't grow while you're training, they grow while you rest. And so it always makes sense to get as much rest as possible. And with naturally intense high the training, the rest is kind of built in. But for other forms of training, which I personally don't have experience with, I would defer to that deloading every once in a while is a good idea. I've always looked at the precept that to whom much is given, much is expected. And so I've always tried to share this data that I've picked up over the course of so many decades, as many people as possible. And I truly hope that what I've observed gives you some insight to making the best decisions for your own workouts. Thank you so much for tuning in. Know I believe in you. And as always, Excelsior.